Hello everyone, my name is Kitetsu and welcome back to my channel. So for this video I had the inspiration from two different things. The first one was I had quite a few subscribers asking me to do a reaction to the Ossiark Bone Reaper models, which I never got to cover on my channel because obviously I was on hiatus. But yeah, it was obviously something I really wanted to do. But the other thing I noticed is one of my favourite YouTubers, Kirioth, he is going through at the moment all of the Warhammer 40k factions and he's doing these kind of range reviews. And I thought that'd be a really cool idea to do the same thing, but for Age of Sigmar. It's quite a fun opportunity to go through all of the different armies and factions that we have in Age of Sigmar right now. To look at what I love about the ranges, what I think is good about them, what's missing, which are my favourite models. And like I did in my Lumineth Realm Lords video, I ended that video by ranking these models according to the ones that I absolutely love. Those that are sort of in the middle and those that I don't really like much at all. So it sounds great fun to me. If you guys like this video, I can quite happily go through literally all of the different factions and give you my opinions on them. But yeah, leave a comment down below if you'd like to see that. Also, don't forget I have launched the Golden Hammer Painting Award, so please do paint something and enter that competition. You have a month to enter that and the winner will get a start collecting box. But without much further ado, let's take a look at the Ossiarch Bone Reapers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each of these models and say whether I particularly like them or not. So we are starting with Vok Mortian, if I'm saying that right, the master of the bone tithe. Now, the first thing I have to say is I do have the uh, battle tome. I do have some models which I haven't built yet or painted. But I'm actually relatively new to this faction, so I don't know everything about them. I haven't read all of their backstory, but I know, um, oh, what is the book? I think it's called Wrath of the Everchosen, which is absolutely amazing, by the way, that these guys feature really prominently. So I've got a general idea as to what these guys are about. You know, they were hidden uh, as a sort of secret army of Nagash and he decided to unleash them after he found uh, Catacross was alive and hidden in some storm vault chamber. But yeah, in terms of what all these models are, I don't really know, so I'm going to take a little read as to the background. So he oversees the harvesting of bones for the Ossiarch Legions. That's all the backstory I need to kind of get a feel for what this guy is. Now, do we have a spinny version? Yes, we do. So in terms of this model, I love the detail. I think he looks really cool. There's nothing that's screaming too fragile at me, which is always a, uh, a massive plus. I like the fact that they've gone for a skeleton army. But rather than going for what I expected them to do and go for really skinny little limbs and fragile kind of joints, they've gone for quite a chunky aesthetic, which I actually really like. This kind of, uh, I'm not sure exactly what this is meant to be. Is it meant to be some sort of coffin that's on his back? I don't really know. It looks really cool. Whilst he's a fairly stocky skeleton, I'm wondering if that thing there would weigh probably a ton. <laughs> he's quite skinny, so I'm imagining that that thing would possibly crush him. But yeah, I mean, it's a decent model. There's nothing really to complain about here. Does he look like someone that's going to be doing various calculations and things? Like, absolutely. He's got his little scroll. <laughs> Do we have any customization options? No, it's a shame that they couldn't have given us maybe a choice of different heads to hang on the staff. I think that would have been really cool. I think that would have probably made it quite a nice way to encourage you to actually uh, buy more than one of these. If you knew you could have different heads on his staff, Maybe, in fact, just a different design for the staff, so you had a bit more choice. Maybe even a different scroll as well. Shame there isn't much customization, I suppose, but it is a very nice model. Okay, what do we have next? That's sort of a bundle. I suppose I could talk about Kratikos. Now, one thing I need to say, because I sort of leapt into this model here, I absolutely love this range of figures. Death have needed another faction for so long, and I know that the Night Haunt came along and they're one of my absolute favourite factions as well, but they definitely need needed something else and I really think that uh, Games Workshop have done an amazing job here. They're sort of channeling a um, Tomb King vibe and yeah I guess this is supposed to be the Age of Sigmar equivalent of the Tomb Kings. Does it totally fill that gap? Uh, maybe not quite but it's something new, it's unique and some of these models I'm so excited about. But yeah let's talk about Kratikos for a minute. Again, uh, he is one of the Mortarks, a brand new one for this army specifically. Here we go, let's get the uh, rotatey view. Again, it's quite 
an astonishing model in terms of the detail. Something I praised the Lumineth for were having these really detailed bases and this is no exception. Does he have too much of a detailed base? Kind of. It's very uh, static, like if you're playing a game it looks more like something that you would see at the Golden Demon Awards on a kind of plinth. More like a diorama I suppose. But I actually love the pose that they've gone for, for the uh, for the Mortark himself. His weapon looks amazing. Really love the, uh, the armor, the kind of bone armor they've gone for. Love how tall and imposing he looks. Do I prefer this to Neferata? I'm not actually sure, but it's definitely giving her a run for her money as my favorite Mortark. Also absolutely love the paint scheme that they've gone for. That's really cool. I never actually noticed the crow that's sitting on his shield. There's uh, an awful lot of detail in this and uh, it certainly takes quite a lot of looking at to pick absolutely everything out. I love the fact he's got his four servants around him, like his scroll bearer. And in fact, look at the insane paint job they've done on that scroll. And he's got his spy master. I'm wondering personally if it would have been better to have had him as a separate model and to have been able to buy these separately and to make them very unique characters. You know, Age of Sigmar does sort of lack a little bit in terms of characters, especially compared to fantasy. So it would have been nice to have maybe had, where well, there's four characters here that could have been fleshed out with their own backstories. But I mean, yeah, it's a decent model. I can see some people having an issue with the fact that the uh, base is very static. But actually, if you read a little bit about his background, he is not someone who leads from the front. He's not like Archeon, who just charges in and tears everything up in front of him he is a strategist and a general who will lead from the back and the whole mythos behind this character is his strategic genius so in that sense you can almost treat him i guess as like a piece of scenery at the back of the army directing things forwards but again nothing too fragile which i like maybe uh this banner here looks like it could snap off quite easily but otherwise it's a very solid model lots of cool detail and i absolutely love what they've done with this mortark and his backstory so yep gets a very solid pass from me right we've got two different horsemen to look at we've got the Liege Kavalos and the Arch Kavalos Xantos. Of these two models, they're both pretty cool, but I massively prefer this one for some reason. It's something I can't really put my finger on what it is I like about this one. As strange as it is, I think it actually boils down to his uh, mount and the kind of teeth and the horns on it. Somehow it really strongly reminds me this model of the Nighthorn, and you guys know I absolutely love the Nighthorn. Like that there could just be straight out of Nighthorn. And and I've said numerous times that I think the Nighthorn army is the one army where I totally think that they have nailed how to uh, pose and model horses. And this is totally up there. Like it looks absolutely incredible. But again, the detail is phenomenal. Is there a zoom in of his face? Ah, interesting. I'm guessing these two horses must be a dual build kit. Yeah, there we go. Dual build kit. I didn't even realize that until I saw this picture here. But I do like the fact that that therefore gives you two head options because I'm wondering now that I think about it, do I prefer this head here or the one with his kind of uh, protruding chin thing? But yeah, either way, very solid models. I like both of them. I guess I don't really need to react specifically to this one because really I like them both the same. I'm actually watching The Last Kingdom at the moment. If you guys haven't watched it, it's insanely good. And those horns on the front of the horse is reminding me of that really strongly. But yeah, really cool. Love it. Okay, now we are getting to some models I'm really excited about. Let's start with the Gothazar Harvester. Oh, I love this model so much. I can't even begin to tell you how much I love this model. Now, when I first saw it, I wonder if they've got a picture. Yes, here we go. This is the way that I first saw this model. And I have to say that I'm not really a fan of this weapon option. And I'm not really a fan of that head option. I was kind of looking at this at first and I thought... I'm not really sure about this. It doesn't seem to really like work as a model. It looks a bit awkward and it doesn't really go together. When you think of their role as a harvester, it makes sense with that kind of big uh, basket of bones on the back and corpses. But something about the face and the arms, I just wasn't really sure about. But it's only actually when I came onto the website and saw this build 
that I absolutely fell in love with this model. Look how menacing and cool that head looks. This is kind of what I was saying about with the um, Vokmortian or Vokmortian, Master of the Bone Tithe. Sometimes just having a simple head swap and a few weapon options can actually make me going from thinking, eh, you know, the model's okay, to absolutely loving the model. But yeah, I mean, that is something that you seriously would uh, think twice about crossing on the battlefield. Super menacing. Love these kind of Skaven-inspired spiky clubs. All these dripping corpses on the back of his body. That head option looks amazing. I love the banner. This is absolutely one of my favourite models in the army. And I can't believe that when I first saw it, I had no idea that you could build it in different ways. Do we have many different different head options and weapons it looks like it might be just the two different heads down here or the two different weapon options but I'm even wondering if I would love that head with these arms too I absolutely love it it's a really solid model and I love the fact that it really strongly fits with the theme of the Ossiarch Bone Reapers I think it says in the description down here something about um yeah here we go a juggernaut of metal and bone that can smash through a shield wall without breaking stride that to me is exactly what this thing looks like it looks like it's ready to smash through anything and then at the same time it's not just a kind of uh, typical behemoth it has a role in the army it's collecting the dead it's rolled two is have they got that the wrong way around its role is to provide as well as to destroy but i can tell you now this is going to be one of the next models i buy i love it it looks so crazy it's so age of sigma and it looks awesome next on to another model i absolutely love i think this looks insanely cool this is the Bone Shaper, which is essentially the sorcerer of their army. I was a little bit worried that it was maybe fragile, but I think it makes up for it with the fact that this bit of plastic here is actually quite thick. And then you've got three branches attaching onto the... Uh, the corpse that it's shaping but whoever designed this did such an incredible job of uh, making it look like he is in the middle of reanimating this corpse just look at how insane it looks it looks so amazing it's such a dynamic and energetic pose i love what he's standing on i love the way the skull is fracturing and bits of it are traveling up this uh, kind of magic and it looks like he is fashioning this skeleton somehow out of the bone that he's found on the floor maybe. But yeah, I think this is incredible. I absolutely love it. I think maybe the side profile of this guy's face is a bit awkward. But then when you look at it in a three quarter view and from the front, it looks absolutely amazing. So yep, yeah, definitely one of my favorite models in the army. So what have we got next? The Mortec Crawler. I'm not going to talk about this one too much, but I do really like it. And again, that's pretty sweet. I had no idea that they're actually... Um, multiple build options of this i just scrolled down to check if they're actually two totally different models but i think what it is is basically you've got either the i'm firing version or in the process of being reloaded version which is this but yeah ranged models are always some of my favorite in age of sigma it's something that i think they need to bring back ever since i loved my uh, wood elves from warhammer fantasy i would say that the one thing that is really missing from this army is actually a dedicated archer unit that's something i would love to see but yeah you've got the workers here look at his little hammer it looks amazing this guy is uh shoveling some skulls not quite sure what he's doing but looks important if the little hamster wheel on the side isn't the best thing on the model i have no idea what is <laughs> it looks amazing does that look really fragile? I think it's possibly too fragile for my liking. I would probably not even glue that on or I would possibly use some green stuff and I would modify it so that this was sitting more in the basket. In fact, there are quite a few little bits of this model that look very uh, fine and detailed. So I think you'd have to be a little bit careful with it, but it does look cool. Love the idea of the uh, bones that can make it walk along. I would quite like a sense of scale to it because actually 50 pounds seems quite expensive expensive what it is but there we go so we've got our cavalry unit the cavalos death riders it looks like we've got loads of weapon options loads of different poses for the horses i still personally think that the horses of the night horn look better i have no idea what it is about those models but i think those ones are fantastic these ones look a tiny bit blocky and chunky maybe but then it does fit with the overall aesthetic that they're going for and wow look at that that's almost like a crocodile head amazing 
amazing. I'm wondering how many different weapon options we get in the set. I'm not going to sit here and count them now, but it does imply you can give them a blade or a spear. But yeah, they're a decent unit. They don't fill me with excitement like some of the other models do, but they're a fairly solid sort of staple to the range. I can definitely imagine some people absolutely loving them. Okay, what have we got next? Ah, yes, the Stalkers. These are hands down some of my favourite models in all all of Age of Sigmar and that Games Workshop have ever produced. I have no idea what anyone else thinks about these models because I haven't particularly looked on any forums or watched any other videos or anything like that, but I absolutely love these models. I can't wait to build my own ones. They just look so damn cool. Do we have a single model that we can rotate around or not? Now, this is a dual build kit. The other ones, what are they called? The Immortus Guard. Okay, so the Immortus Guard are these guys here with the shields and the kind of, I don't know, glaive, spear, halberd thingies. These guys look okay. I like them. There's nothing wrong with them. But if Games Workshop had have just released these, I wouldn't have been that excited about them, but there is something about the stalker variety that I absolutely love. Personally, I think these are near perfect models. Just look how over the top this guy is with these enormous two handed swords. I don't actually know which version I prefer the two handed swords or the four individual blades. But I just prefer the head option. I love the fact they've got three heads together. I don't know. Tell me what you guys think down below. Do you love these models as much as I do? Or is it just me? I don't know. So next we've got the Mortisan Soul Reaper. Like the uh, Bone Shaper, this is again one of my absolute favourite models in the range. It's their role to cut the souls from the enemy with their magical scythes. So again, another sorcerer type unit. I'm guessing these guys are more destruction based, whereas the bone shapers are probably more uh, involved in bringing things back. I'll have to read the uh, battle tome a bit more. But this one has very much another sort of night haunt feel to it. Very cool. He looks so impressive as a model that I can imagine him being a unique character again. And perhaps that's something they could have or should have done seeing as again it's a model that you can't multi-pose by the looks of things i can't imagine you wanting to buy too many of them in which case they either really should have added a little bit of customization for him or perhaps they should have made him a unique character but the paint job on this is fantastic he looks amazing there is basically nothing to complain about on this model in my opinion apart from again how fragile this is is that on the sprue like that? Yeah, so you should be just about okay cutting this off without snapping through there. But it does look very, very fragile. It's almost a shame in a way they didn't have a hand option holding just whatever that is. And the other hand holding a scythe without the energy coming across. Because although it looks phenomenal, it also does look fragile. Right, so we got to the end of the first page. Let's see what else we've got down below. We must be nearly getting there. I'm not going to look at the endless spells, but they look decent enough. We've got the soul mason when i first looked at this i really disliked it because i wasn't sure what was going on with these weird almost um kind of robotic looking bone legs but the more i looked at it the more that i get what they're going for and the more i love it again the energy thing looks a little bit fragile it's not quite as bad as some of the other things i've seen and it's certainly in line with the uh, night haunt so not too bad but a little bit fragile but he actually really reminds me of um something that you would see from the Seraphon maybe, almost like a slan sitting down on his rock. But the whole concept of this kind of sorcerer sitting down on a chair that walks around for him, I absolutely love it now. It almost looks like a moving kind of throne, but yeah, definitely a model I want to get now. Really like it, not really anything to criticise. I think it was more... Uh, the images from sort of this angle that I thought the legs looked a bit funny, but when you actually see them in 3D, they're actually incredibly well sculpted. Wow, they really do have quite a lot of uh, wizard style units in this army, but you know, it's Nagash, it's what you'd expect. With the Nighthaunt being one of my absolute favourite armies in all of Age of Sigma, I do love the fact that they would work so well together. I think just from a visual point of view, having them on the table together would look absolutely amazing. Ah yes, the Mortec Guard, I haven't talked about them yet. So these are your standard battle line troops, they look really cool. I'm still trying to work out 
out what I feel about the sculpts of the skulls. I really like them, but at the same time, they're not quite what I'm used to. They're very stylized and uh, almost a bit cartoony but then I do appreciate the fact that again they've gone for something quite thick but yeah these guys are like the elite heavy sort of infantry of the death army and I really like that kind of idea that they were going for they're heavily armored you know these things have literally got the same save as a storm cast and their rules are actually insanely good but yeah 20 of them in a box I wasn't expecting them to uh, include 20 I was thinking this would be 10 for about the same price so yeah I was actually really pleased and and I know that you can build these in two ways. You can either have them with the spears or you can have them with swords, I do believe. Yeah, here we go. Here are some of the swords and you can also give them some two-handed swords. So there's quite a lot of variety in what you can build and what you can equip them with. You can also distinguish your units by giving them the helmets or having the uh, bare-headed option. I think I'm leaning towards without the helmets. But yeah, I love the shields, I love the models, they're very cool, they're a great battle line option, but for someone who personally loves the battle line options normally the most in my armies, I think this is one case where I actually prefer a lot of the other models, which I guess gives the uh, whole faction a kind of unique flavour to me, I guess. But yeah, we've already talked about the Immortus Guard, I'm not going to talk about the scenery, even though it looks awesome. The Morgast, these are older models, so is Arkhan, still really good Nagash is as great a model as he has ever been and that basically brings us to the end of the models if you wanted my super quick opinion on the Morgast I would have to say that I think the stalkers look so much better if you had have asked me this say two years ago when death didn't have very many models these were some of my favorite apart from perhaps how fragile the attachment to their base is but yeah no I just absolutely love the stalkers right to finish off then let me rank these models according to green being absolutely love it to bits there's nothing i would really change about them in the middle being like yep they're great models nothing to complain about but maybe not quite as exciting and then red is something i don't like at all so the amortis guard i'm gonna put them very solidly in the middle and the only reason they're going in the middle is because i think the stalkers are so damn cool the soul reaper absolutely love Love the model he was borderline in the middle just based on how fragile that energy swell looks but the model just looks so good that he has to go in the green for me the Mortec guard because they are so unique i'm gonna have to put them in the green i love the fact you get 20 models i love the fact they're so heavily armored i kind of love the fact that they've given death their own version of the stormcast you know a really heavy hitting battle line option that can hold their own and uh, dish out punishment but also take it as well. I think you all know where the Harvester is going to go. That's going to go straight into the green. Absolutely love it. Soul Mason, Funny Wizard Man on a chair. I'm going to put him in the green. But purely because I've been able to look at the model in 3D. Which really changed my opinion. You know there's nothing I disliked about him. But now he's very definitely in the green. Uh, of the two different horse sort of general options. I would have to say that the liege Kavlos. I'll put him in the middle and then obviously the arch Kavlos is going to go over in the green. To be honest they're the same kit it doesn't really matter but they're kind of somewhere between green and amber for me and based on the fact that there's two totally different build options it's going to be very easy to kit bash them to get something that you're really happy with the bone shaper absolutely love this model seriously one of my favorite little sorcerers in the range right now the bone tithe is probably not a model i'm going to rush out and buy but there's nothing particularly wrong with it so i'll put him in the yellow just a shame there couldn't have been more head options and maybe a few little customizations we could have done with him and I guess that the thing he's carrying on his back does look unnecessarily heavy. Catacross, I'm running out of room in my green side, but I think I would probably put him in the yellow just because I'm still trying to work out in my head as cool as he is and as amazing as his backstory is, 
the sculpting is, the poses. I'm still just trying to work out, should he have been one model with his advisors on there or should he be the model on his own and his advisors separately? I'm not really sure. But overall, he's a great model. Nothing really to complain about. The Mortec Crawler, it looks a bit fragile, but I do love the way you can build it and it's insanely intricate and detailed and the hamster wheel is very cool. And yeah, I guess I wasn't really sure if uh, Age of Sigma was still going to be really supporting artillery units so you know it's really cool to have that included and then finally the horse unit somewhere between the green and the yellow not particularly inspiring but you know they are what they are and there we have my final list i suppose i should mention that you know i'm only looking at the new models the morgast probably would be now in the lower end of the yellow i suppose even though they are classic and they're great sculpts i would probably have to do something with some green stuff to improve their stability as for arkan he's a classic love the model i personally probably wouldn't include him in this army because i think one more tark would be enough and I would most certainly buy Catacross you know <laughs> he's kind of the uh, figurehead of the army so you'd have to go with that one if you were just going to buy one but yeah overall I think this is an amazing army I absolutely love it are they a replacement for the Tomb Kings I mean yes and no they're really not trying to be the Tomb Kings but they are kind of filling that void I guess loads of unique craziness lots of things to absolutely love about this army some of my favorite models in the range are in this army is there anything I would change I think really I would just like to see an army archer unit but otherwise i think i'm really happy with it and i can't wait to buy more of them but yeah anyway thanks for watching this has probably been quite a long video so i apologize for that let me know if you guys want to see more of these kind of uh miniature range reviews and otherwise stay safe i hope you're all well your support on my channel has been amazing you really are the best audience on youtube don't forget to hit the like button don't forget to subscribe and i will see you guys really soon